don't have a Thanks, problem. Thanks, BK. Everybody wants to come out to see Andy Lee, the unbeaten prospect, ringside, including Kevin James. Yeah, put him up. He's ready for action in our main event. It is time for our main event. Mohegan Sun Arena, long been the place where unbeaten prospects have launched their careers to the next level. Tonight against Brian Vera, Andy Lee trying to take off to stardom. Many feels is its destiny. Four days removed from St. Patrick's Day. Lee ready to show Southern New England that the luck of the Irish has blessed him with the skill and the will. It's a path he's been traveling on since his childhood near the banks of the River Shannon. My name is Andy Lee. I'm from Limerick, Ireland. I live in Detroit, Michigan. I started boxing um, roughly around the age of eight properly in the gym, but my older brothers boxed and uh, they just got me started as soon as I was old enough. You know, even before I could go to the gym, they had me from punches, jabbing and stuff and moving around, putting on the gloves. But yeah, and my older brothers, I always looked up to them. They were my heroes. That brotherly influence spawned a successful amateur career in Ireland, which made Hall of Fame trainer Emmanuel Stewart take notice. We had top amateur boxer a uh, year before the Olympics was a kid named Jesus Gonzalez. And when they told me that he'd lost in a big tournament they had for kids under 19 in Cuba, and they told me it was somebody from Ireland, I said, I don't have any top amateur fighters, especially someone that can compete on the level with Jesus. <laughs> Stewart was so impressed, he figured Lee was worth a look with his own eyes. I invited him to come to America, and he came to the Kronk Gym after flying for about 10 hours. I just got off the plane from Ireland, and uh, Emmanuel was there. And, you know, we were supposed to just go down and shake out and work out, but he said, do you want to spar? And I said, yeah. And came in the gym and boxed with one of our top fighters in the gym. I sparred with K-9. K-9. Cornelius Bondred was the first guy I ever sparred in the Kronks, and he was undefeated at the time. And I was just so impressed. And I was surprised at his competitive attitude. Every day I come down here to spar, spars were getting harder and harder and harder. And then eventually I showed that I could hold my own in the ring. And then I became the guy who tested other people, not the new guys who come into the gym. It was my decision to come here and move here and live here and really absorb, like, submerge myself in the boxing world. As you look around on the wall, there's pictures of boxing. So this is really like a boxing house. It takes a long time to settle into, and it's such a big change in such a fast period of time in my life. And Emmanuel's very good. He obviously, when I came here, he showed me around, made me feel welcome, and took me around, spent a lot of time with me, so I didn't feel alone. And, um, and the guys here, you know, some of the other boxers and, and the coach here, Javen, who you know, have become good friends of mine, and so we spent time together, and, you know, it's a home away from home for me now. Well, in addition to being Andy Lee's manager and trainer, I would probably say that probably he and Jonathan Banks are probably my two best friends. I mean, so we, uh, we do lots of things together. We, uh, I mean, most of the time we're together, going to places, doing things. Well, it looks like we may be here for a, a few more hours yet. <laughs> it's been good having you, so uh, come again sometime. Now, I'm gonna win. <laughs> And he has that confidence here in the ring, too. There he is, just 23 years old, 6'2", 158 and 3 quarters, 15 and 0, 12 knockouts. And for now, that attitude that the world is his. A lot of his work has been on undercards of major fights Manny Stewart is involved with. Three of his last five have been back home in Ireland, well-traveled. However, this is his first fight in New England, and this has long been a crowd that readily welcomes the Irish fighters. This ring was the home to Gaddy Ward Walker. And here is Brian Vera. Texan is 5'11", and at 162 pounds, he says he knows for a fact that he's the stronger man. Sports a polished up 15 and one mark with nine knockouts. He knew what it was like to have the goose egg in the loss column. He was unbeaten when he entered the contender season three. His path on that show got a quick detour, KO'd in the second round by J. Don Codrington. He then beat Max Alexander on the undercard of the finals. Teddy Atlas has the fight plan sponsored by AutoZone. With an Irish fighter as the headliner tonight, only fitting we should be at the Dubliner doing a fight plan. A Irish legend has it that if you can catch a leprechaun, he'll lead you to his pot of gold. Well, Andy Lee, tonight, he's not gonna look to catch one, but he's gonna look to knock one out. Well, not actually a leprechaun, but a shorter fighter. 
a fighter named Vera. Now, Andy Lee is tall, he's long, he's got a great southpaw right hook. Look for him to use it when Vera, he's got a terrible habit of reaching in with that jab to the body, bang, the right hook. Also, he has a habit of reaching in with the right hand with the left hand down. He does that, bang, again, the southpaw Andy Lee, that right hook is gonna connect. And if he does that, he'll be one step closer for that pot of gold. And maybe he'll sit down and have a cold brew. But well, how's Brian Vera gonna pull off an upset against Andy Lee tonight? If he's gonna do it, he's gonna need a little luck of the Irish. He's also gonna need to figure out a way to get inside with the much taller, longer Lee, who's a southpaw and he has a great jab. I don't think he's gonna be able to get in because he tries to get in, he's gonna take on too much damage on the way in. But guess what? There's a way if he understands and he's watched Lee, that he can get Lee when he goes over to throw the hook to the body, which he likes to do. He comes in close. Right there, block it, bang, hook back, and if he does that, maybe then it'll be him who'll be sitting in here, maybe not having a beer, maybe for that kind of celebration, a little Irish whiskey. Big reception for Andy Lee moments ago. And I gave you instructions earlier, obey my commands at all times, protect yourselves at all times. This is good, this is good, good luck. Tony Carantano, the referee scheduled for 10, and there is Andy Lee, who said of his progress, I've moved faster than I thought. I am really happy about where my career is. He has every reason to be. High expectations. Southpaw in the crock colors of red and gold. And those Irish Kelly Green gloves. I should say it early, I think that Vera, although a very game guy, and usually a TV-friendly guy, aggressive, makes fights that you like to watch, I think he's made to order for the style of Lee. I think right now is a little bit of a mirage. Vera's gonna try to box a little bit because he knows Lee knows him. And the Vera that we know is a guy who walks in and he's not easy or he's not hard to find. Right now, I think Vera's trying to throw Lee off a little bit, do something he didn't expect him to do, box a little bit. But sooner or later, Vera's gonna do what he does, which is come in that front door. Vera recently made a move to Philadelphia to try to advance his career and change his style. He's a new manager, a new trainer. He's been sparring southpaws at Joe Hand's gym in South Philly to prepare for Lee. Right, left hand from Lee. I see a knockout in this fight. Coming right. from what, Teddy? Coming where Lee scores a knockout over Vera. Catching Vera on the way in. Probably with that right hook. Lee can be effective with the left hand, too. That's a hand with a southpaw with that left leg, the back leg behind it. You can turn your body into it, and you can hurt somebody. He just hurt him there with that left hand, and Brian Vera goes down. Yeah, I think Vera, as I said, made the order for Lee. Five, six, seven, eight. All right, come to me. It's going to be Lee's choice. Lee's choice, right hook or straight left hand. One or the other. Vera trading punches with Lee. Straight into that front door as you predicted he would. You said it was a mirage, just watching him box early on, but he is what he is. Exactly. Lee patient. The funny thing, Vera, to have any chance, he's going to have to come in that dangerous front door because he can't win on the outside with the long, tall Lee. Once Vera gets inside, there's a little haven for him because Lee is not an inside fighter. He's dangerous when there's space, like right now. He's tall and upright, six foot two. So a good opening round for Andy Lee, scored the knockdown against Vera. We knew tonight Vera was gonna have to get inside with Lee, but we also knew there'd be danger. And that left hand caught him on the way in. His legs were a little bit gone. And then the left hand puts him on the canvas. Another look, Vera trying to get in, bang. Left hand as he tries to get in, he gets hurt. And Lee opens up. In that first round, the headshot advantage for Lee, 18 to four.
Jesus. See, the problem for Vera, as he comes in, he leaves holes, he leaves gaps. And those gaps are being filled by the counter-punching Lee. He just sees him coming, and he's got space to get off before Vera gets close. So Vera's got to double or triple up that jab if he's going to walk in. Get himself some cover. See, unlike Aaron Pryor in our opening fight, who was very tall, and did not know how to consistently fight tall, Lee does. You know what Lee's trying to do with that right hand right now? What's that? He's throwing a little bit of a fake jab out there. It's just a setup jab, mm -hmm. like a little bit of a decoy. And then he's looking to quickly turn it into a hook. And if the hook lands, fine. He'll put the left hand behind it. If the hook doesn't land, he'll use it to blind the sight of Vera, to kind of distract his vision so the left hand can score. Drew him in that time with a short left hand that connected. Again, watch that low lead hand for Lee, the southpaw, the jabbing hand. Keeps it low, but he knows he's at a safe distance. And he decoys with a jab and then all of a sudden turns it into a hook. Very adept at doing that. There's the left hand again as Vera came forward. But watching that front right hand of the southpaw, says Teddy. See if he can turn it over. Styles make fights, but the style of Lee makes him the fighter that he is. It's very difficult to deal with a southpaw who's this tall and knows how to stay tall. That's why so many feel he's going to have a promising career. Now the one place where Lee has not shown himself to be a master, that's on the inside. But he figures, hey, I'll just do this. I'll tie up a little bit on the inside. I'll buy my time. And when I get separation, I'll go to work again. He does so well when he has that separation. In a few instances where he just missed with that uppercut, Vera tried to get off there. Vera, Vera comes with a Vera loving hurt. right hand. Let and he did. You, he Lee did. hurt for the first time in his pro career. That right hand, of and course, he could be successful against Southport. That hurt Lee. So a spark of offense here at the end of the round for Brian Vera. Been an entertaining night here on Friday Night Fights. Ron Katz is a longtime matchmaker who's provided many nights through the years for us like this. And we want to pass along our sympathies to Ron and his entire family tonight. Early this morning, his father, Sonny, passed away after a long illness. Sonny was a faithful fan of Friday Night Fights and was the reason why his son started down the road of a long and successful career in this fight game. So we want to pass along our condolences to the entire Katz family. Our best to Ron Katz, as you said. A terrific matchmaker, been around the business for probably 35 years. And again, everybody at ESPN's condolences. Round three here between the hot prospect Andy Lee and Brian Vera. Lee was in control of things until those closing moments of round two. When some confidence came Vera's way, as he had a clubbing right hand that landed, and he hurt Lee. Vera's father was a pro heavyweight. His dad took him to the gym when he was just four years old. Now 26 years old and 15 and one. Participant of contender season three. Vera's only loss has come by knockout. And he's been a bigger guy lately. Last two fights at 168 pounds. Well, Lee's been at middleweight his whole career. Matter of fact, Lee's last fight was 159. Tonight he comes in 158 and three quarters. But Vera put on six pounds since his last fight. Comes in tonight. Well, actually, six pounds less than his last fight. Drops down to 162. Yeah, we saw him at 168 against Max Alexander the night of that great Toddington Bika fight in Boston. Well, right now, Vera is looking to get close, and he's starting to double that jab up to close the gap instead of using one. Oh, he so just that, used his head on the inside. So that gives him a little cover to get in with that double jab. One jab, 
not going to do the trick. And again, Vero looking for the right hand, a punch that most orthodox fighters find success with against southpaws and have confidence with. When Vera did hurt Lee in the last round with that right hand, it was because he was able to get in close. Again, it's not that Lee's Superman, but if he had a kryptonite, his kryptonite would be when guys get close. In fighting is not something that Lee is comfortable with. Now on the inside. Now as much as we don't expect anything from Lee on the inside, we expect and we need to see something from Vera if he's going to make this fight competitive when he gets inside. He could not do what he did a moment ago and just get tied up and then go outside and eat left. Oh, there. It was a left hook to the body. It was good. Was it above the back, George? Yeah. I think it was right on the back, I guess. There's no warning from the referees. No, there was no fight between Vera and Lee. It was a rare week off for us last week, but not for all of us. Teddy was working last weekend. He was the Grand Marshal of the Staten Island St. Patrick's Day Parade. That is one of the, I've worked with you for many years now. I think that's one of the best looks I've ever seen on you. The morning suit, the Irish sash, and the top hat. I am digging that, bro. That was something there. That's embarrassing. That's a little <laughs> bit embarrassing. It was a nice honor. I appreciate it. And the people were nice enough to make me uh, not feel too embarrassed. But that was great guys, stuff. I thought that tape got destroyed. No, no, no. We have cameras everywhere, Teddy. Of course, beloved on Staten Island, all the charity work you do there. And that's a great honor to be the Grand Marshal of the St. Patrick's Day Parade. I know you have some Irish in you. You take great pride in that. Yeah, my mom was Mary Riley. And... Uh, I'm half Irish. My dad was Hungarian. I do take pride in it, as all people take pride in their heritage. And I appreciate the people of Staten Island giving me that opportunity to walk with them and have a nice day. We have a tough Texan against a skilled Irishman here in our main event, Brian Vera, against the unbeaten Andy Lee, who moved to Detroit to further advance his career with Manny Stewart at the Kronk Gym. And many think the sky's the limit for Lee, but we are seeing some obstacles in front of him tonight as Vera has tested him. He hurt him at the end of the second round. And as Lee said, hey, this guy's going to be very game. There's a good, solid left hand from Lee. Well, even though the left hand is doing the damage right now, don't take your eyes if you're Vera. You shouldn't take your eyes off that right hook because right now he's got such respect for the left hand. And Vera has his attention with the left hand. A right hook from Lee right now would be really damaging to Vera because Vera would never expect it. Lee paused for a moment as if he had Vera in control, and Vera used it as an opportunity to surge forward. And now he snaps that jab. Well, right now, Vera showing a dimension that Lee didn't expect. He expected something to come in close. He didn't expect jabs on the outside. And look at Vera work on the inside. Digging and opening up a cut. There's a cut that's opened up. A gap across the top of the right eye of Andy Lee. Big action round here. Lee being tested for the first time in his pro career by the very game. Vera. Vera might be made to order for Lee, as I said early. But he's so tough and determined that he's not cooperative in any way. And in that way, he's really testing the conviction and the toughness of Lee. Lee walking forward with his hands down and lands a left hand. Vera says, bring it, you're going to get it back. Right now, Vera eating those left hands from Lee. What Lee needs to do, I think, Joe, is stop hitting him with the one left hand. Put the right hook behind it. See, there's the left hand. Vera's taking it well. If I'm in the corner, Lee, I say, hey, put the right hook with it. 
The test has arrived for Andy Lee. Let's get back and box him. Cut over the right eye of Andy okay. Lee being tended to. Box him, box him, and pick your punches. Here's what caused it. So Brian Vera we giving the well-hyped Andy Lee a good test here, Teddy. Yeah, I don't think we can be sure that's what caused the cut because we didn't really see visual evidence that that caused the cut as far as I could see unless I missed something. I don't know that I saw bleeding at that moment. But either way, we do know that Lee is being tested and he is bleeding. A replay guys have looked it over. They say that's the point that the blood started. But nonetheless, a very active finish to that fourth round for both men. Highly entertaining as Brian Vera. Is hanging in there tough with Andy Lee after being knocked down in the opening round by a left hand. A 10-8 opening round for Lee. Well, if is proving anything besides the importance of being game and having a good beard or a good chin, he's also showing that every once in a while on the outside, you can jam with a taller guy. And Vera has been effective not only in landing when he's used that jab, but in just keeping Lee honest. Where well, Lee can't stay back, Joe, and just pot shot looking for the left hands. He's got to respect that jab. And that takes some of Lee's attention away from offense. And that's a good thing for Vera. So if you're a young fighter and you're a shorter guy, don't go in there just looking for hooks and right hands. Use your jab, even if you're fighting someone taller. Get a lot of opportunities for Lee as Vera comes in. Watch Vera as he comes in. There's plenty of opportunities for uppercuts, for straight left hands, and for right hooks. And we haven't seen the right hook that much yet. And I have a funny feeling we're still going to see it before the night's over. Oh, well, Vera holding behind the head to set up that uppercut, and he receives the warning. He's just digging down and trying to make a fight of it is Brian Vera. And backing up Lee throughout this whole round as Lee picks his spots and tries to catch Vera coming in. Vera keeps coming forward. Caught him with a short left uppercut that time. Again, there's the left hand that's been there all night for Lee. The straight left hand is there again because there's a hole in the defense of Vera, as he comes in wide, that left hand is available. But Lee not putting the hook with it. And chased down again. Well, everyone here at Mohegan Sun and ESPN wants to send their best to Milt Schlosky, the attorney to many of the great boxers of the last 20 years, and a consultant here at Mohegan Sun since it opened. Usually here ringside is Milt, but unable to make it tonight due to a recent illness. First three rounds, Brian Vera had 46 connects. In the last two rounds alone, he's had 68 connects and opened up a cut over the right eye of the hot prospect Andy Lee and swarming him here to open up this sixth round. Lots of pressure we've seen recently from Vera. And Vera knows, obviously, that there's a cut over that right eye of Lee and Vera not being careful with his head on the inside. <laughs> being a bit of a billy goat, let that head swing around a little bit. Teddy's scorecard, 49-45 to Lee. Had a 10-8 round to open things up, but Vera has made a fight of it here in these middle rounds. You know, I know that the legendary Emmanuel Stewart doesn't need any help from me, but if I'm in the corner of Lee, there's probably only two things I'd say. One is box on the outside, which... I overheard Emmanuel telling him in between rounds. And the other is, when you catch him with that left hand, which you can't miss him with, put the right hook with it. We know he takes one good shot. Let's see how good his chin is when he gets hit two good shots in a row. There's the left hand. 
And there's the left hand again, but no right hook with it. And a right hand came over the top from Vera. There's the left hand. There's the left hand from Lee. Again, if a right hook would be behind it, I have a funny feeling that Vera would visit that canvas. And again, you could understand my statement early. Vera made to order for Lee. Comes in wide, gets caught with those straight shots, but game enough to take Lee into some deep waters. Got opened up, catch him short, a right hand. He caught a right hand from Brian Vera. Mouth open of Andy Lee, too. Well, right now, Andy Lee depending only on the left hand. There's no jab, just the left hand, and it hurts Vera again. But again, no right hook with it. Vera's still there every step of the way. We know right now Vera has a good one-punch chin. Again, I think Lee wants to find out if he has a good two-punch chin. Swelling around both eyes of Lee and that cut worsening as Vera comes forward again. Cutting shot. End of six. Here's what we were talking about. Watch the left hands that are raining down. There's one. And here comes another left hand. Again. One more look. Bang. Good left hand. Knocks Vera backwards off balance. What did you see in all those pictures besides the left hand? An absence of right hooks. Joe Tessitore and Teddy Atlas ringside at Mohegan Sun. Four rounds to go between Andy Lee and Ryan Vera. The punch is the last round. Boy, what an exciting round. 43 to 42, slight advantage for Vera. Let's bring in our studio guest analyst, Anthony Peterson. Anthony, this has to be surprising you right now, the type of fight that this has turned into. What do you think of it? Uh, I think that Andy Lee made this fight way more harder than exposed Uh I think if he went down to the body early in the fight, this fight wouldn't be like this. Um, I'm surprised that his, his, his trainer, the um, legendary Manuel Stewart, didn't tell him to go to the body early because any fighter know that in the later rounds, once you get that body, they slow down shortly thereafter. Well, what about the other side, Anthony? Brian Vera scores big. A right hand comes in from Vera. Lee looking to tie up. What about the other side of Brian Vera? He's now in this position. Oh, he's showing what tremendous heart. He's stretcher. showing tremendous heart. Um, shots real wide, um, but he's he's, st he's standing there. And he's fighting like a uh, like a true warrior, and this fight is um, Thanks, turned out Anthony. to be a great fight. Back and he's forth hurt. they go. Vera trying to chase Lee across the ring. Right hand comes in, blood streaming down that right side of his face. <clears throat> Vera has hurt Lee several times in this round, but more than physically, he's got him now confused and discouraged and not sure of himself. Lee in a lot of trouble right now, and we know he can't fight on the inside. Right now the question is, can he tie him up on the inside? It was his world when he entered the ring. Unbeaten and pretty. Ain't pretty no more. It was said before. It's coming true tonight. Ryan Farrell looking for the upset. What's hurting right now, Lee, is he doesn't know how to tie up. It almost reminds you of another Emmanuel Stewart fighter, Tommy Hearns. Remember that joke years ago when Tommy Hearns got hurt for the first time? He didn't know how to tie up. And he was able to stay loose. And he was eating more and more leather. Right now, Lee oh. The right hands, which is often the nemesis of a southpaw fighter. The right hands of Vera finding Lee time and time again. 
One of the bigger upsets we've seen on Friday Night Fights in some time. Brian Farah topples unbeaten Andy Lee. Well, I have to stand corrected. I said early on that I thought Lee would score a knockout. Knockout was right, but I had the wrong guy. Although I do think that the fight, when we look back at it, some people are going to question, should it have been stopped? Let's take a look back. Hey, Lee was badly damaged, but this one single shot earned a stoppage. Let's take a look. Right hand came in there. Another right hand comes in. Typical of the round we saw from Vera. Then in the center of the ring. Here it comes. Big right hand, and that was it. And now why you get that kind of reaction is because Lee threw a punch back. Lee threw a punch back, and you very, very rarely see a fighter TKO'd when he consciously is returning fire like that, Teddy. Yes, returning fire maybe in a defensive flurry mode, but not like that. Look, I like the referee, and I know that you have to look out for the health of the fighter. There's no one who thinks more of that than I do, but that stoppage could be questioned a little bit there. He had been taking punches all the way through, and that was just another one of the succession of punches he had taken early. And as you said, it looked like it was good enough because he just answered back. Tony Parantano, the referee tonight. With the TKO for Brian Vera, let's make it official by sending up to the ring to generous Joe Antonacci. Boxing fans, the time, two minutes and 17 seconds of round number seven. Your winner by technical knockout from Austin, Texas, Brian Vera. The commission here does not allow us to interview the referee, but we will speak to Brian Vera after the biggest win of his career. We will come back and talk to Vera. Shocker here in Connecticut. Stay with us. Friday Night Fights is presented by Just For Men Hair Color knocks out the gray better than ever. We are here at Mohegan Sun, where there have been upsets in the past, but perhaps one of the best in many, many years tonight. A look at the Just For Men Hair Color Punch Track Fight Recap. Brian Vera, 197 total punches landed. The headshots, 149. Andy Lee put up the numbers early, but Vera kept coming, 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 and never stopped until earning himself a seventh round TKO, a huge upset. Congratulations. How does this one feel? Oh, it feels great, man. I put a lot of work into this. I spent seven weeks down in New Jersey with Blue, uh, Bruce Blair, and uh, I wanted, wanted to win. I obviously showed that I wanted to win the fight bad. I, I did whatever it took. It was a little ugly, a little sloppy, but I did what I had to do, you know? Let's look back at the seventh round. You and Teddy can go through the hard. analysis Tremendous of it. Hard. Thank you, sir. Seventh round action. When you start breaking them down, guys, take it away. Well, you got close. I guess you were looking for right hands against his I was, right? yes, sir. I was throwing a little looping, but I was trying to throw him a little straighter like that. And I knew he was going to land. I seen that he was dropping his left hand quite, quite a bit, so I was trying to sneak it in. And you were being allowed to get close. Were you surprised that he didn't use his jab more to keep range, to keep distance away from you? I did. He just he kind of, you know, from previous fights that I watched, he was throwing a lot of it. For some reason, he wanted to stay in there bang with me. I, you know, it was he a wants to like that. I loved it. I loved every bit of it. And that's why I like to show the fans right there, a fight like that. Well, you show that, you know, you don't, you don't have to have the best style or the straightest punches, but if you have a huge, huge heart, yes, you can turn it around and you can do almost anything. You did it tonight. And I got to be honest, I got to say right to you, you shocked me because I did not expect you and, to and win I this want, fight. And I wanted to I do that. That. That, was, that was one of the main things that, you know, I hear the way you say it and the stuff you say about me, which I respect, 
I understand I have a lot to work on, but you can't take away the heart. The no, heart. you can. And you showed tonight that that was enough to get you a tremendous And now win. we can keep working on our skills. Thank you, sir. You showed plenty of heart. You also showed some improvement from the fighter that we saw on Contender Season 3, so your time in Philly really helped. I want to get your reaction to the stoppage because the crowd reacted here. They didn't like the stoppage. You had battered him. You had bloodied him. We just heard a report that Manny Stewart, who, of course, is the trainer of Andy Lee, says, I have no problem with that stoppage. I felt like it was, it was they were going to have to stop it eventually anyway. What round was it, seventh? Yes. yes. They were going to have to stop that fight because I was going to come in. I got in the best shape of my life, and I was going to even come, come out a little stronger the next round. So I'm kind of glad they did. Let, for me, ask you, let me ask you one thing because yes, I'm sir. sure the fans are like the others. And, again, you shocked me. I give you all the credit yes, in the world. Thank you. But he was catching with left hands early on, right down the middle. He was. Which you were giving him hold for. And – he was staggering you a little bit, but he never put the hook behind it. No. What would have happened? I know it's a tough question. You probably never had it asked before. Yeah, right. What would have happened if he put the right hook behind it? Well, you know, uh, you probably would have caught me a little worse. I, don't, I wouldn't say he would have knocked me out because we got in the best shape. And, you know, getting him in great shape helps you to take a shot. And I didn't really want to take them shots, but uh, for some reason he didn't land it. I guess I kept my hand up a little better today after he threw the, you know, threw the straight punch. When he was getting ready to throw the hook, I guess I was blocking it. But, uh it happened so fast, I really don't even remember too much of it, to be honest with you. Well, you showed great heart, a great chin. Shorten up those punches. I don't want to yes, see sir. that chin like that no yes, more. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Brian Vera, congratulations. Providing us with already a memorable moment on this season of Friday Night Fights. The stunner. The seventh round TKO of the previously unbeaten Andy Lee. Brian Vera does it here tonight. More